Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here with an old Thomas Nelson Bible called the Bourgeois Reference Bible. Now we're going to show you that this is an excellent text type. I'm wondering if Cambridge didn't do a bourgeois at some point. It's a little thicker than a Concord reference, but it's along those lines, and uh, I just really like it. Now, this is yapped. It's a good semi-yap. It still will show you in just a moment here, even though it's imitation leather, it's a hard imitation leather. You know, I like the imitation leathers they're coming out with now, the leather lux, the leather soft, the leather flex, all of these. But you can see that it, it has still the gold edging just almost perfect on it. So it's like somebody has got a crease in the front. I don't remember where I picked this up. It has a name that's been taken out. How you get names out of a Bible, like if it's been imprinted, you just use... Uh, alcohol like denatured alcohol but you don't if you get a cotton ball and scrub it you'll rub off the black as well so you get tweezers you put a little bit of the denatured alcohol or just regular rubbing alcohol in the lid and just go in there very lightly and it will take the name out that's just a hint now if you get too much alcohol in there it will it'll like go through especially on leather covers so you just you have to do it very lightly and uh, that's just a hint but this is actually art gilt leather i mean uh edging as well as thumb index the art gilt indicates the gold on salmon so it's held up just extraordinarily well and it had all the thumb indexes still in there which is a rarity now i don't care much for these thumb index there are some people that won't buy a bible without them i just don't use them i just don't so we're going to do a little size comparison with my uh cambridge large print and it is just a little bit of a smaller profile even with the semi yapped edges So it's a little better carrying Bible, a little thinner. We'll show it to you like that. You can kind of get a feel for the thickness. Appreciate Brother Mallory zooming in on that. Just a great size Bible to carry. I did one on the uh, an Imperial Pica by Harper recently. And uh, man, that, that's just a great carry Bible. This is real close. And this one has center column reference. The Imperial Pica had end references. Of course, the Imperial Pica by Harper had the Moroccan leather. This is imitation leather. This would be what I would call just more of a sit in your lap read Bible. It still opens really good. I'll give you a little hint at the sizes. I mean, just feels great in your hand. Feels tremendous in your hand. We'll see how wide this thing is. Yeah. But for a long time, I've wanted a bourgeois reference, you know, and I'd seen them on eBay. And so I was able to get this one. I have no idea what I paid for. I just don't remember. And uh, let's look at this. That's what it looks like on the inside. It is not red letter. But it was put out by Thomas Nelson back in the day. Thomas Nelson started printing Bibles somewhere around 1797, 1798. They are the second oldest Bible publisher in America. First is Holman, 1743. Of course, Collins back in 1791. It is a uh, self-pronouncing Bible. And it has some of the most beautiful illustrations scattered throughout. It's almost like a family Bible in that respect just great now 
Now, when I was a young Christian, or even coming to the Lord before I was a Christian, I, the pictures just really helped me. It's got a little place for notes up here. You can tell the paper quality is just absolutely out of this world. Yeah, Thomas Nelson and Sons, 385 Madison Avenue. It says Bourgeois, 8VO references, self-pronouncing. And uh, the paper quality, I can't describe to you the smoothness of this paper. It's unlike anything that I see now. Show you the references here in the book of Genesis. It doesn't have like in text uh, paragraph headers. It does have it at the beginning of the chapter, just like the 1611 King James did. It also has very little up top. It doesn't have the double uh, you know, so if you're looking, trying to find something, you know, not a lot up there. Now, one of the places where this thing just shines, and, and oh, I wanted to show you too about, like, even though it's imitation leather, it like opens flat. That's the reason I said this is kind of sitting in your lap, Bible. It's got the red, you know, salmon red, art gilt edges just fantastic in that realm but one of the places and i'm going to guess the prints eight point print solid eight point print no ghosting great lining you could tell this was just a quality bible at the time fantastic quality bible and then a aid to the bible study by guess who a t pearson and it's got all kinds of stuff in the back. Of course, those of you that are into Bible study a lot, you know Arthur T. Pearson uh, back in the early 1900s was one of the names, maybe late 1800s, early 1900s. But he did so many Bible study work. So this is part of that. Just outstanding things. I'll read to you some of the things that this thing has in it. So it's got an overview of the books of the Bible. I find those things helpful. And then different Jewish groups like the Essenes, the Pharisees, Sadducees, Samaritans, characters of the Bible, their countries and journeys, earliest scripture names. And it's got little maps beside, you know, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Deborah, Ruth, Samuel, Saul, David, Solomon, Elijah. So you get these little character studies and that's very uh, helpful you know Paul James Peter John persons for closing mention that it has has a harmony of the four evangelists so this is a pretty old Bible for it to be called that and then how to study the Sunday school lesson by Mrs. M. G. Kennedy has that read the lesson search time circumstances persons places difficulties write it out duties and then the seven most remarkable chapters of the bible miracles and parables of the bible which they almost never have all the miracles and parables of the bible they normally like have between 36 and 39 and uh in uh you know, miracles and parables of the Old Testament, but I'm talking about the New Testament, 36, 39, and there's well over 50 of both. I don't know where they get their thing. And then a table of weights and measures. We're going to see if this Bible is in fact names and titles of the Son of God. Before we get to the maps, names and titles of the Son of God, allusions, characteristics, and epitaphs. Consider him, he was obedient, meek, lowly, guiltless, tempted, oppressed, despised, rejected, betrayed, condemned. Look at this. The Lord is my portion. He's my maker, my husband, my well-beloved, my Savior. It's got scripture references for all that. So the names and titles. I wonder if old Robert Bayer used this to compile his book on the names and titles of Jesus and the names and titles of the church. Brother Bayer, he teaches down in San Antonio, I think, still. If he's still around, he's got to be very old. He had memorized the whole Bible. He was Bill Clinton's favorite preacher. 
Bill Clinton mentions him in his book, The Story of My Life, pages 250 to 252. He doesn't mention him by name, but he's talking about Robert Baer, where he followed along a guy that had memorized the Bible, including all the punctuation. So Robert Baer's got the best book out on this, but this is great to have, a great resource to have in a Bible. So let's see in the map section. Oh, before we get there, there's still more stuff. Our Lord's appearances after His resurrection till His ascension. Rivers and brooks of Scripture. See, you just don't find this. Months of the Jewish calendar. Money of the Old Testament. Money in the New Testament from Augustus to Nero. Continued. Okay, so now we come to these beautiful maps. Gorgeous maps. We're going to see if, in fact, it takes them through water on the Exodus. And see, this is the bad thing about having an iPad. When I'm reading stuff, I'm still trying to open up. I don't know if you guys do that. I do that sometimes. I'm to confess your faults one to another. That's scripture, James 5 16. It almost it takes them right on the corner of water. Like the most liberal Bible I've ever reviewed is the only one that takes them through water or something. It's like, I don't know why they don't take them through water on the, the Bible maps. Absolutely exquisite Bible maps, though. So if you can find a bourgeois reference, could you imagine one of these in some kind of genuine leather or something? Oh, it would just be something you'd just carry with you. I love the topographical. There's only, I think, eight maps has the uh, reinforcement page here. I'm going to see if I can, I've looked and I I couldn't find a, uh, a date in here. I still don't think I'm going to be able to. Printed in the United States. Boy, that's a rarity. R.R. Donnelly still printing stuff in the U.S. I wish there was a way I could transmit to you what this paper feels like. It's unlike any pa Bible paper that I know of currently. And uh, I ran across some other just really great pictures in here. I mean, look at this full color of the Sphinx. You know, the Sphinx shows the worldwide flood. The reason the Sphinx has gradation like that is archaeologists tell us it was submerged in water at one time. Wonder when that was. Amen. So the Bourgeois Reference Bible by Thomas Nelson, of course, it's long out of print unless somebody's printing one. I know church Bible publishers are doing a turquoise. This reminds me of the church Bible publisher's turquoise. Um, a good friend, let's see, what is his name? Uh, he's an internet friend. Uh, Brian McClurg, I think, just did a great review on that church Bible publishing Brian did. Great guy. And uh, this reminds me of that in the size, the print. It's just a little light on the print. Great Bible. Bourgeois reference, Thomas Nelson. God bless. Keep reading the Bible. Believe it. Amen. You'll go to heaven in Jesus' name.